why do things spin? Turns out you got to push them to make them spin. And we can quantify this with this concept called torque. We say that our torque tau is equal to R cross F. That gives us RF sine theta. We use the right hand rule for this. You can see here this right hand where you put your hand in the direction of R and you curl it towards the direction of the force. Your thumb will then point in the direction of the torque. Where does the sine theta come from? You can think about it as it's either the perpendicular lever arm times the force or the lever arm times the perpendicular component of the force. Either way, just looking at this perpendicular lever arm, if you have the angle theta there, that's the angle between R and F, sine of theta will now give you that perpendicular lever arm. And so now that force is acting directly on that lever arm and making us spin. What next? Well, our lever arm is pointing away. That's where you get that thing from, lovely. And I have one more diagram here that shows if you have something spinning, you have an axis of rotation, you can say that R cross F, you do the same thing, R cross F, by the right hand rule, it's coming out of the page towards me. And my torque now is equal to R cross F or RF sine theta. All right, torque is RF sine theta. Let's try doing an example. What's the net torque on this flywheel due to these three different forces? What we'll do is we'll find the torque from each force and then add them together. The torque from force one is equal to R1 F1 sine theta one. What's R1? It's right over here. What's F1? It's 20 newtons from the problem statement. And what's theta one? Well, you might be tempted to use 30, and indeed that'll work out fine here. I'm gonna propose that we actually wanna use this one if we're doing this in a more general way, and I'll show it like this to show why. If we have R, we wanna start with R and then cross towards F. And we want the angle between R and F starting from R and curling towards our force. So here, if I've placed them both starting at the same point, you can see that we want to curl that direction, which gives us that 150 degree angle instead of the 30 degree angle. Again, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the sine of 150 degrees. It works out fine either way here, but I'll show you in the next case where it might be a little different. So we have R times F times the sine of 150, and we get a torque of five Newton meters. Now for force two, torque two is equal to R2 F2 sine theta two. R2 starts from the axis of rotation and goes towards the point of application of the force. F2 we know from the problem statement of 30 Newtons. And then theta two here, we could use 90 degrees. But if we use 90 degrees, it might not give us what we want. Sine of 90 degrees should be one. And here, this is actually trying to spin us clockwise, which should be a negative contribution. So if you want to use this 90 degrees and just take care of the direction yourself, that's fine. If you want to let the sign take care of the direction for you, then we have to make sure that we start in the direction of R and curl towards F, which means that we have to take this other angle of 270 degrees. Here, I'll show this starting with R, curling around towards F using our right hand. And this tells you that that's the angle, right? If you curl the other way from R and then go directly towards F, that tells you that it's going to end up a negative. So you can use the 90 degrees and know that you end up with a negative from that, or you can use the 270, just always keep that thumb pointed towards you to have the positive K hat direction and you'll end up having the sign give you the direction. Here's the sign of 270 giving us a negative, which results in a torque of negative 15 Newton meters. Full disclosure, I personally prefer to just look at the force and figure out, is this going counterclockwise? If so, this is going to be a positive. Is this going clockwise? If so, it's going to be a negative. And I take care of that positive or minus by myself when I'm doing two dimensional stuff. When I'm doing three dimensional stuff, then I'm not really using sine of theta anyway. I'm using components and taking cross products that way. 
But hopefully I've made it clear you need to make sure that you're keeping track of the sign and that things that are spinning counterclockwise end up positive, things that are trying to spin clockwise end up negative. Lastly, torque three is R3, F3, sine theta three. R3 is pointing straight down. Here we notice the angle between these two is 180 degrees. So the sine of 180 degrees is zero, which means that we get zero from this. And that's because there's no perpendicular lever arm. So pushing straight on here is not gonna make this wanna spin at all. It makes sense. We can now add these three things together and end up with our torque of five minus 15 or negative 10 Newton meters. We can represent that as negative 10 Newton meters in the K hat direction, or I can, if I want, say it's going to be 10 Newton meters clockwise. 